I'm Janita Tarenda Pullins. I am a Coda, which is a child of a daffodil, and that is my story. I ain't that shit. It's about self empowerment, it's about self awareness, it's about self respect. Natay and welcome to another episode of I Ain't That Chick. I have another fantastic guest with me today. Please introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, I'm Janita Tarenda Pullins. Janita, you mentioned in your intro growing up with a mom that was deaf. What was your experience? Like? It was very difficult um, as a kid because my mom was not like everybody else's mom. Um, you know, for school notes, I had to like write her note out for her and then have her just sign it. So I had to be more of an adult than I was a kid, you know. I had to grow up early because I had to learn how to speak properly. I had to learn how to speak like an adult so that, you know, when I wrote those notes for school, she would just sign them and I can take them to school. Um, it was difficult because um, not only did, was she just deaf, she had, um, you know, a little bit of mental incapacity to the mm -hmm. point where you know, it's some things that she just doesn't understand. Okay. And, um, you know, she's not fully, you know, where she can't understand anything. But it was just some things that she just did not, she didn't process the way a normal adult would, would process. Mm. Now, was your mom born deaf? She was born deaf. Now, were her siblings born deaf or was no. it just your mom? She, no, she's the only one who's deaf. Okay. Um, she did have a maternal aunt who was deaf. Um, and I remember her vaguely from when I was a small child and then she passed away. But she did have a maternal aunt who was deaf. So now, when you were a young kid growing up, when did you first notice that, okay, my mommy is different than all the other kids' mommies? Um, it's funny you ask that. I was a, I was a little girl, and um, my mom was born with some deformities. Uh, she was born without a neck. Uh, she was born without a, an abdominal wall. Okay. She was born with one kidney and one full lung. And she has like a small piece of lung, and then her stomach comes all the way up into where her lung should be. Okay. And um, a kid said to me, well, what's wrong with your mother's neck? I looked at my mom, and, I, and it was the first time that I realized that my mom's shoulders were shorter than everybody else's. And I said, nothing's wrong with my mother. Because she was mommy. She was right. perfect. Right. You know, nothing's wrong. My mom, she's right. fine. You felt like you had to be your mom's protector? I've always been her protector. Always been. So how yeah. did you communicate with your mom? Um, sign language, ASL. So you learned sign language at a young age? I did learn sign language at a young age. Um, I have a lot of home signs though. Okay. Um, so there's ASL, there's sign English. Um, and uh, with ASL, it's a very, um, very shortened version of, of English. So it, you may say, I'm going to the store. Okay. Can you sign it? Right. Yeah, I'm about to sign Thank it. You. See, you may say, I'm going to the store. In okay. sign language, you say store, I go. Was there ever any resentment between, you know, from your mom to your grandmother? Because your grandmother could hear and she pretty much raised you. So was it, you know, like, oh, well, she's kind of my daughter's mom? Um, there was a lot of strain there because my mom would say I didn't do something and my grandmother would override her and say, no, she ain't going. Mm. You know, my grandmother um, was a very strong matriarch. Um, okay. you know, she raised seven kids and I was like one of the siblings. Okay. So, you know, okay. um, so like my two younger aunts were in middle school when I was born. I look at them more like sisters, sisters. than I do my aunts. Um, and when I talk to them, there's a different dynamic between us than it is my other aunt, mm -hmm. um, who I have a very strained relationship with, um, because her, her, fiance then before he was her husband molested me that relationship with her is very strained because i resented her for so long because your niece comes to you and tells you that you know your fiance molested her and you know and she had to go find out whether it was true or not and question him. And it was hard for me because he would be around the family and, you know, that's my cousin's father and, you know, and, you know, everybody's, oh, he's such a good man. And my face is like, Psh, whatever. I hated who I was. I hated where I came from. Mm. You know, I hated um, what people told me I was going to be, you know. People um, in your family told you? Oh, you're so, you know, you, you know, that same aunt said to me one time, uh, 
you know, if you don't get yourself together, you're going to find yourself gang raped. Um, wow. What a, th what, what a thing for an aunt to say. To me, I understand where she was coming from and what she was trying to do. Mm -hmm. But when you look back, I've been gang raped twice. I was molested twice, you know, um, and I was raped three times. So it's like, oh you know, when you look back and you say, how do you speak that over somebody? Yeah. You know, and then expect them to bounce back from that. Fill in this blank for me. I'll finish the sentence. My mom is powerful and strong. Um, she's been through so much. And I didn't have that relationship with her where I can be like, get, get advice because she wouldn't be able to give me advice. Okay. Um, you know, and I think that I've tried to find that all my life. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. one female um, role model that I could go to and say, Ma, I need some advice on this. Mm -hmm. And I found myself, even mm -hmm. as an adult, latching on to older women mm -hmm. in need of that wisdom and guidance, you know, to the point where I called the mom, my second mom, you know, mm -hmm. and being hurt in many different ways to the point where I just like push myself away from people. I feel like I've never really had that that mom in your corner mm -hmm. kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To push you and you know, and just to be your mom and let you be a, a, a little girl, even at this age, just to be a little girl. I'm the oldest grandchild. Mm -hmm. Everything was, I had, it was very high expectations of me. You know, if I did something wrong, it was like, oh, I, from you, I wouldn't expect that. And it was just like, what do you mean? Exactly. Let this won't you get away with exactly. this. But when I do something, it was. Yeah. And I realized as I got older that to whom much is given, much is required. Yeah. And I realized that that my calling and gift in life has been for me to be that person that people look to. And that's not mm -hmm. always easy because mm -hmm. who do you go to? Mm -hmm. You know, when you're strong for everybody else, who do you go to? And who do you go to? <laughs> That's when you're searching for women to have somebody to go to. And I, you know, and I had to get to a point where I just said, you know what, God, I only have you. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think, by some chance, some reason, that God may have, you know, set some things up so that you could get to that place where you had to say, God, I only have you. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I've had people that I've, you know, grasped and they just fell through my hands, and mm -hmm. it was just like, all right, God. Mm -hmm. You keep making it so that you remind me that I only have Ooh. you. Want to find out more about I Ain't That Chick? Visit our website at www.iainthatchick.com.